So how do you send more masculine, dominant, attractive texts to a woman? How do you avoid sending those boring, ordinary, average, I call them nice guy texts that make you look like every guy in her phone and make it really easy for her to stop replying to your messages? That's what Calvin and I are gonna discuss in today's video. How's it going, Calvin? Glad to have you here. This is the first time we're gonna be doing this. Yeah, really great to be here, Bobby. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know Calvin, he's been a coach of mine for the past year. I've been hearing amazing stories from his clients that I followed up with, getting amazing results. And one of the reasons that we decided to do this was because of a common issue that Calvin is running into with his, his clients and I'm seeing with my clients. And that's this idea of sending out texts that don't accomplish anything and also texts that make you seem feminine, make you seem unattractive to the woman. So what Calvin is going to be doing in today's lesson, what we're going to be doing together is we're going to walk you through a case study of how to send more masculine text. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with this concept of masculine text, Calvin, why don't you just give them a quick idea of what you mean when you say sending more masculine texts? Yeah, sure. So what a masculine text does is it brings its own entertainment, right? You want to be stepping into the scene with your text and changing the environment a little bit. You bring a point of view. You bring an observation. You bring a philosophical thought that you had. You bring a funny challenge or demand onto her, right? It's the exact opposite of a passive text, which would be just you sitting at home texting her, hey, what are you doing? How's it going? What are you up to? When a woman gets a masculine text, it suddenly gets her gears turning, right? She's got something to react to. Yeah, totally. And you, I know you and I, when we do these coaching calls with clients, one of the things that we do, and I know you you love doing this, is reading through their texts because it becomes very apparent right away, especially when a guy has lost the interest of a girl it's almost like you you can pinpoint right away the, the little things that they're doing that they don't even realize. What we wanted to do here was we wanted to give you a little bit of a case study because it's very easy to say send more masculine texts or send more attractive texts. But then when it's time to actually send them, it's what does that mean? So I know that we were talking recently about a client that you've been working with who had this issue with a girl that I believe she was losing interest, right? She was pulling away. Yeah, yeah, it was a real shame. They had been dating about two months, and for the second month, she had not wanted to have sex at all, and she was flaking out on dates, and it had got to the point where he was texting her, and she would take a full day to get back to his text. So give me an idea of what his story was, what kind of text that he was sending her to get an idea of where he was at initially with her in terms of just the general vibe of what he was sending. And even some yeah, specific sure. examples if you have them. Yeah, no, yeah, I've got some examples actually right here. So I told him, so this guy, Lyle, he's dating this girl, Allison. And I was like, okay, Lyle, show me your most recent text that you sent her. Apparently, Allison had gone and was on a week-long trip being a bridesmaid in her friend's wedding. So she's having this great time. Here are three of the texts that he sent her. Hey, how are you? How is your trip going? I hope you're having a good time. Yeah, <laughs> I, I totally feel your pain in terms of having to see this. And I also know that's a common thing that guys will be sending. And it's what's hard for most guys to understand. And you said it perfectly earlier is that when she's out having a good time and you come into her world, yeah, you better be bringing that masculine energy. If you're coming into her world with that weak, sort of neutral, almost feminine, scared type of vibe, yeah. you're not adding anything to it. So in contrast to the fun she's having with her, you know, her wedding party or whoever she's hanging out with, yeah. you're just this almost annoyance. That's exactly it, man. It's an annoyance. And uh, so here's what I did. What I like to do a lot with guys is when I'm coaching a guy, I want to find out about his life. Right. So I asked him to talk more about who he really is. So as we're talking, he ends up telling me about this formative moment that he had in his life. Right. So he plays in a band. He's really talented. Right. And 
he said one of the worst moments of his life was when he had put out his first album and this music critic had just roasted him in a popular music magazine. And he says the phrase that always stood out from this terrible review was mistakeless and flavorless. I'm gonna read you a clip from the actual music review from years ago. The critic wrote, technically without error, this album is so caught up with playing it safe that it ends up making no impression at all. This is the most technically perfect, bland and vapid album I've ever heard. Do good intentions count for something? Maybe. Do I want to listen? Hell no. Yeah, brutal, brutal. And it's funny, the word that you threw out there, mistakeless, yeah. was interesting because Rob Judge, our mutual friend, him and I were hanging out this weekend. And that was one of the things that we were talking about was that guys like Rob, guys like yourself, guys that have done really well, have made plenty of mistakes, right? It's yeah. like, it's not perfect. It's not always smooth, right? You've got to be willing to make mistakes because if you're not, you're this guy getting the bad review, right? And in his yeah. case, not just in terms of his music, but also in terms of his dating life. So tell me, how did you deal with that with him? What did you say to him? We had to turn it around fast, right? This guy, he didn't have much more time before she was going to either friend zone him or stop seeing him completely. I said, what's the most recent thing she sent you? So she had gotten to the point where she sent him just a photo of herself and some of the other bridesmaids at the wedding, right? Now, what, what you already know, Bobby, is by the time a woman's just sending a photo without adding anything interesting, that's what we call a low investment text. She's not even putting effort into it anymore. I'm sure you've seen stuff like that. Yeah, if she's only sending a photo, not following up, it's almost like an obligation text. It's yep. like, I don't even want to write this guy, so let me just send him a photo. It, it checks the box of, oh, okay, I contacted him, I can go back to having fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with that, yep. Yeah, so I knew we had to do something good. But anyways, as his coach, that was what I needed to come up with a reply to. Okay, so I said, all right, Lyle, if I wasn't here, what would be your idea of what to text her next? Okay, so his idea on what to text her next was one of these three choices. Nice picture. Hope you're having a good time. How's everything going? Yeah, not good. Okay, so I said, okay, let's try to come up with something good. And what I like to do with guys is I want them to know good texts don't just come from like this magic place in the clouds that only me and Bobby Rio have access to, right? I like to say, hey, you tell me about your life. I'm going to show you how there's a good, masculine, edgy text hidden right there in your life. And all you have to do is know how to put it together. So I said, tell me what you know about this wedding she's at, all right? He tells me the story that Allison told him. So apparently the bride went over to Sweden and started having an affair with this married, rich Swedish guy, right? And then the guy ends up getting divorced, and now he's going to marry Allison's friend, his former mistress. So they were having the wedding over in the States, though, because they didn't want the ex-wife to find out and show up and cause mayhem at the wedding. That's literally something Allison had told Lyle, right? So he tells me this, and, like, my mouth almost drops open. And I'm like, dude. You have that story available to be texting about. And the best you can come up with is, how's your trip coming? Dude, you got to lean into the fun in life. Lean into the salaciousness. Women like a guy who's willing to be a little bit edgy and have some mischievous fun over text. Yeah, I like, I, I, real, real yeah. fast, because you were telling me off camera when we were talking about this story, you were even telling me how how that review that he got with his music really applied to the text he was sending. And you were explaining it to him, I just explain it because I think a lot of guys fall into the trap that he was, he was doing. How did you explain it? Mistakeless and flavorless. His, safe, so right? Was safe. He was being safe in a sense. Like he, he didn't want to rock the boat. So he did what he thought was societally acceptable, what he thought everybody else would do. And yeah. when you do that, you're not going to ever piss a girl off. You're never going to get her upset at you, but you're also never going to fully engage her. Just like I said, with music, if you just copy some standard music, you may not have anybody go, oh my God, that's awful. 
But nobody's also going to be like, oh my God, I got to go fly across the world to see this guy in concert. And that's how it is. So I thought that analogy that you had given me before was really good because a lot of guys can probably relate to that. All right. So you've got this story that he has available to him. And if you're watching this and you're thinking about a girl in your own life, just listen as Calvin is talking because you're going to find that there's always these kind of stories available, right? This isn't just some random chance encounter that this guy had. Everybody has some kind of story or something they can use. So keep going because I want to see it here. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as he told me that, I was like, okay, I got the next text you're going to send him. I got the next text you're going to send her. So I said, send her this. So the groom's ex never found out? Too bad. I wanted a story about her showing up and you pushing her into the pool. <laughs> That's a good text right there. Right, yeah. We always say that if you're, if the sort of litmus test is, if she gets the text, if she reads it, is she going to at least, she doesn't have to crack up laughing. I think a lot of guys think it has to be super funny, but yeah. she's got to at least like smile and be like, oh, like you're together on this joke. You're creating that partners in crime in, in the joke together. And that's all you need to do. So per- perfect example of the kind of text that accomplishes that. So what did he say when you get well, him? One reason why this guy's a great example, right, is he fought it a little bit. He wasn't comfortable with this idea that maybe we'd rock the boat with that text. And he said... I just don't know. Can we can we come up with something else that's not quite so edgy? And I was like, dude, I'm going to give you several options, but none of them are going to be bland. So what would you tell him then? I gave him another option, okay? Another possible great text for him to send would be this. I hope you fulfilled your bridesmaid duties and got the bride totally wasted. Again, very simple, but also the kind of text that she's going to get, she's going to smile, and it's going to make you and her part of the same team as opposed to sucking the energy away from her with how's their day going or how's the wedding. It's like, who the hell wants to answer that when they're having fun, right? They want to they wanna text. That's fun. So let me guess because I. <laughs> it's funny you say <laughs> Clients, one of the things that you, I, Rob, Chris, we've all dealt with is we come up with these texts, we give them something that we think is brilliant, we know is going to have a really good shot at working. What happens? They either don't want to send it at all, or they want to, or they send it. And then when they tell you that they sent it, you look at it and they like watered it down so much that it, it that, it, it. That, that it barely even has any f- effect. So what did he say when you gave him that one? Yeah. So he goes, what if we change it and we send this instead? What if we just say... Hope you fulfilled your bridesmaid duties. Oh, it's like something your grandma would send. Exactly. Exactly. And so actually I told him, dude, there you are again, mistakeless and flavorless. That music critic would be laughing at you right now if he saw you were sending this text. You've got to break with this mentality of being so afraid of criticism that you sanitize yourself every time. Have some fun. And funny you mentioned the grandma test, right? Rob Judge is always talking about it. Guys at home, if you're about to send a text to a woman and you realize her grandma could send the exact same text, do not send that text. So yeah, her grandma could easily write her, honey, I hope you fulfilled your bridesmaid duties. Right? Yeah. One thing off topic or on topic, but is A simple thing to do, right, is if you're going to text a girl something like that, anything, even if you think it's no matter what you're going to do, if you're unsure, text it to yourself and Mm. get it and read it and see your response to it. Because does it seem if you're reading it going, yeah, my grandma could have sent this to me, don't send it. On the other hand, sometimes we come up with a joke that is way too sarcastic or it's mean or it's and in that time it's always good to also get it and go okay does this immediately make sense what was great about the examples that you gave was that they're universal right like they're, they immediately make sense it doesn't require her to think and that's one of the things i think clients sometimes do is they overthink it and i know back when we've worked together we've all i've been guilty you've been guilty where we try and we overthink it it's like The perfect balance is exactly what you're saying, where it's more, did you get the bride drunk, right? Very simple, but also very fun. Okay, he doesn't want to send it. He wants to send grandma text. What happens next? I say, dude, I'm going to give you some more options, but none of them are going to make you happy till you decide to take a risk. So I said, okay, give me some more inspiration here. What One thing I ask clients for a lot is, do you have any inside jokes going on with her? And he said, before she left, 
he said that he was coaching her on coming up with ideas for her bridesmaid speech. And he said she kept cracking herself up because she kept on having ideas that were too risque. So I was like, perfect. That is literally our next text. So I wrote him this text. I said, you could send her this text. You better have given a totally inappropriate toast. If not, I'll be very disappointed. <laughs> no, right, again, pulled right off of his life. I'm not pulling yeah. these from some magic source that only yeah. dating coach can access. Came right out of his life. You know, you know what's even you know, the saddest part of this is that he tells you that she's amusing herself with these risky ideas. And, and yet he's scared to enter that. She's obviously the kind of girl that's thinking risque things. And he's yeah. still, still just can't get over that fear of sending something a little risky. So you give him that one. What does he say? He was a little scared of that one again. He asked for another option. So I gave him another option. I said, okay, buddy, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna teach you a little lesson here. When a woman sends you a picture, one fun thing you can do is surprise her by honing in on one little detail of the picture that she didn't really intend to be the focus and make that the focus of your text. It's a good way to throw her off guard. Yeah. Great you enough. ever done that, Bob? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I've seen Rob, our, our friend Rob is great at this because sometimes he'll even do it with me where I'll send him a picture or hanging out and I'll be like, yeah, he'll notice something. I'm like, how did you notice that? But I think that's a great thing because most guys, what do most guys do if a girl sends them a picture? What will most guys say? The most obvious thing. If she, Oh, you look so beautiful. You look great. And that's yeah. what she's expecting. And what do we always say? What's the key to attracting a woman? Do the unexpected. Do the unexpected. Break her expectations. T t tell me, give a, a little background on, on this picture and what yeah. you, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I got to tell you what exactly the picture was, okay? So to the average general eye, it was just a picture of the bridesmaids posing for the camera. But I'm looking for details. And so I happen to notice they're standing in front of the hotel entrance. And three of them, including Allison, are standing on a luggage cart, right? So I'm like, oh, we're going to go with that, right? And so I wrote him this text. Looks like you girls are about to take that luggage cart for a joy ride. Promise me you didn't run over any kids. Yeah, it's fun. It's surprising. It's flippant. It's a little bit edgy. It also meets her personality of the risque bridesmaid speech that she was planning. So it's enter that. Yeah, okay. What Does do you think? Like Does he like that one or no? No, nah, he got scared of that one. And he said, do we have to make the joke about running over the kids? What if we just write, and his idea was, let's just write, looks like you had fun on the luggage carts. Mistakeless and flavorless. I yeah, see. it doesn't even have, it's not a grandma text, but it's dud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he even had an idea of texting, I hope no one got hurt. Yeah, it, it, look, this was rough. But again, one thing I really like about this guy is that by the end of this particular session I'm talking about, he got it. He made a full 180. Yeah. But I'm, yeah, he was definitely making me, making me work for it. Yeah. So I said to him, look, let me break it down like this. You know how different book authors like have a different author voice, like a Stephen King, it's going to be full of profanity and dark or like a Charles Dickens is like long winded and old timey or the Hunger Games is written in present tense and it's like super cynical. Your texts need to have their very own author voice and it needs to be mischievous, outgoing, full of your own personalities, your own observations. It needs to be masculine. Yep. So said to him, all right, it's time to choose. Here's your four good texts, all right? So for the sake of everybody watching at home, let's go over the four texts I gave him as options. All of these are great texts. Number one, so the groom's ex never found out? Too bad. I wanted a story about her showing up and you pushing her into the pool. Number two, I hope you fulfilled your bridesmaid duties and got the bride totally wasted. Number three, you better have given a totally inappropriate toast. If not, I'll be very disappointed. And number four, looks like you girls are about to take the luggage cart for a joy ride. Promise me you didn't run over any kids. All right. Yeah. So I asked him as a fun exercise, what do they all have in common? What would you say, Bobby, those four options all have in common? 
I think one of the things that popped out to me is that they're all essentially flirting, right? Yeah. That is what flirting is. It's playfulness. It's slightly teasing, not in a mean way, right? Teasing in like a playful way. Hope you didn't run over kids. Like, I hope you pushed a bridesmaid, you know, the woman into the pool. That's flirting. If you were in person, that's how you would flirt with a girl. So if you're in text and you want to keep it going, that's how you got to flirt. Also, it demonstrates personality, right? You're taking a little bit. I yeah. wouldn't even say he's, he's saying that these are too risky. I don't even think they're super risky. I wouldn't. I think that if anything that yeah they're a little edgy running over a kid but it's not edgy in a mean way it's not edgy in a profane way it's just it's just it's it's like a like a a fun edginess so that's yeah. kind of how I describe yeah. it yeah you make a good point one thing i think a lot of nice guys don't realize is there's more than two settings for a man people think that it's either on one side the nice guy Boy Scout who never says anything a little bit daring and is Mr. Doormat, or you're Jeffrey Dahmer and you're like out on the hunt committing horrible atrocities. And that's not the only two choices available. It's a There's a whole slew of things in the middle. And where you want to be is the Bart Simpson character. Yeah. You want to be just a little bit mischievous, a little bit flippant, a little bit daring, just because you want to entertain yourself and keep yourself from getting bored. That's, in essence, what a sexy man is when he's flirting. Yep, perfect, perfect, perfect observation. So out of those four, which one, did he send any of them? And if so, which one? Yeah, yeah. So I told him, it's very clear which one we have to send first, because it's got to be the luggage cart text. Reason being, that text has the shortest life of relevancy. It only works if we reply directly to this photo she just sent. The other three can actually be kept in your wallet and you could use those and just sprinkle them out for the next couple of days while she's at the wedding. Yeah. So he trusted me and he sent the luggage car text complete with the running over kids joke. So then I'm talking to him and I'm like, now, Here's the next lesson. And he goes, wait a minute. She just wrote back. I believe she just wrote back, right? And I'm like, yeah, of course she just wrote back, man. That's what happens when you actually engage her with some interesting stuff. Yeah. What so she wrote. Yeah. Okay. G give me an idea what she wrote or tell the audience. Yeah. What, was her text or? I honestly don't remember exactly what she wrote, but she was having fun. She was laughing. And I said, okay, now you take it from here, buddy. You've got three good texts to get you through the next couple of days while she's on a trip. He, he portioned them out and he ended up getting her totally into him by the end of her trip, right? So next thing is she comes back and he's, okay, how do I ask her out now? All right, I got her back interested again. Now we got to do something about this. So I said, okay, buddy, Lyle, what would be your idea? Again, if you weren't talking to me, what text would you send her to ask her out? Here's the text he had in mind. Hey, would you like to hang out sometime this weekend? And then he planned to follow it up with, what would you like to do? <laughs> oh, man, this guy's like the casebook example of nice guy, wishy-washy, indecisive, feminine texting. Yeah. I'm sure you, I'm sure you, you laid into him. So <laughs> I laid in, yeah, I laid into him with brotherly love and I told him, listen, man, th that's mistakeless and flavorless. Again, you don't want that music critic to laugh at you the rest of your life. You got to show the world you're not this sanitized guy anymore. And I said, women like to agree to a date invitation when you present the date all packaged and wrapped up in a book. You want to be presenting the activity, the location, the day of the week, and any extra info that would make it seem fun, okay? So what do you think you did, Bobby? From my experience with clients, they still do some, there's still this, there's this resistance, right? That, that we have to doing something outside the norm, even, and this is what's so messed up, is that even when we know we should do something else. Even when we have a coach telling us we should do something else, yeah. there is a resistance that I, I've been coaching now for 15 years, right? And my guess is that he he did some watered down version of 
of what you told him to do, but it was still closer to what he wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. What he did actually was argued with me, right? And he said, I just think that's a little presumptuous to come with an idea for the date. Like I was presumed to know what she would want to do or when she would be free. And I said, okay, let me explain this. What you think is being polite and not presumptuous and letting her choose the date, she perceives that as you being good for nothing and forcing her to do all the work to come up with the date idea. Yeah. And to as be- masculine, you have to lead everything. The whole idea, this whole concept of masculinity in texting, it's masculinity in everything. This is one of the biggest things I try to drill in to yeah. the guys that I work with and even just the guys watching my YouTube videos mm-hmm. is that women would always rather you lead, even if you're leading them in a different place than they wanted to go. Meaning, even if she was in the mood for Mexican food and you chose a sushi place, she'd still be way happier than if she had to go, hey, can we go to a Mexican place tonight? Like, she would rather go where you wanna go because you're presenting a masculine vibe and that's what she wants. That's the only reason she's on a date. She doesn't give a fuck about the food, right? She can go, if she wanted Mexican food, she can just go with her friends and have Mexican. She wants to be with you and she wants a guy who's presenting certainty. She wants a guy who's presenting leadership. So did he understand? Did he take the- Oh, he got it, he got it. Okay, cool. So I had to get into the next lesson, right? As Bobby Rio, when you're time, when you want to ask a girl out, you don't just shoot the invitation out there. You want to start a fun conversation first so she gets in the mood of having fun with you, right, before you yep. shoot the invitation. So I said, once again, Lyle, tell me any more inside jokes you can think of that you two have. Give me some more context about the Lyle and Allison world. And he said, recently, before she went to the wedding, she he said that they had been in a little a little argument about celebrity heights. And uh, she had brought up Machine Gun Kelly, which for those of you who don't know, that's the rapper who dates Megan Fox, okay? She said Machine Gun Kelly is six foot four. And he said, no way the guy is that tall. He's not that tall, right? So then Allison apparently at the time said, no, I bet you a muffin that I'm right. And if I'm right, you gotta get me a muffin. And as he tells me the story, I'm like, dude, this girl is actually really cool and she's doing all the work that you should be doing. She just made, she, she just- made the bet. She set you up with a layup. Yeah, she sets you up with a layup and you don't even want to take it, right? She turned a boring old conversation about celebrity heights into a fun bet with stakes and a joke prize of a muffin. Like that should totally be the next text. So once again, I used his own life and I said, okay, okay, here's what we're going to send her, okay? It's going to be a three-part text. First thing you do, text her, just found this about our friend Machine Gun Kelly. Then send her a link to Google search results that show Machine Gun Kelly height is six foot four. And then text her, you totally cheated. No one would have known that without Googling. (laughs) So okay, Bobby, how do you think he responded to that? If he was listening to everything you've been saying previously, he would have been fine with it. If he's still, if he's still, I hope he took this one. It's a very simple one. There's nothing even really dangerous about that text. He tried to fight it. And Uh, he said, do I really have to accuse her of cheating? Isn't that kind of rude? He said, flirting, it's flirting. (laughs) Exactly. He said, what if I send her the link? to the results of six foot four, but then I write, that's really impressive, you were right. Grandma. Grandma text, right there, right? So I said, dude, please, if you've, if you've learned anything so far from how good the wedding text went, please just trust me. So he did, he sent it, right? And then once again, I'm like, okay, now let me explain why, and he interrupts me again, and he says, she just texted back. She just texted back. She never used to write back this fast, right? So her text she wrote back was, I didn't cheat, exclamation point, with a bunch of emojis that were laughing so hard they were crying, sent within a minute of getting the text, okay? So as that's high investment. Yeah, yeah, totally. So then I had him reply again, and I had him write this. 
Nope. The system was rigged. I don't owe anybody any muffins. Now, I'm happy to say he didn't fight me on this one. He just, yeah. Okay. He, He was learning, right? So then she replies back again. They get into a fun texting conversation. And I'm like, boom, perfect. Now it's time to ask her out with the lesson I just taught you. We need place, activity, and night of the week. Any other details to make it sound fun? So, Bobby Real, l- let me tell you a little bit more about how I helped him pick the day based on how bad his situation was. Have you ever dealt with a case like this? The guy and the girl maybe started out good, but they've fallen into a routine where now all they do is watch TV on the couch. Yeah, I've I've been in that myself with women over the years, and I've dealt with plenty of clients who those are the lucky ones, right? When they hit me up at that point, it's very salvageable. A yeah. lot of times guys wait until they get the, I just don't feel it anymore. And then they hit me up, but I've definitely, and I love those kind of situations that you're talking about because they are, you have time to, to turn them around pretty easily as we're, we were seeing here. But yeah, it's, totally know. I totally know the situation. Yep. And that's one reason why I actually really like this guy, Lyle, who's a really good sport about all my criticism, right? Because he hit us up before it was too late. He was in this stage where she never wanted to have sex. She never wanted to go she's out losing with him. interest, but she, he still had access to her. And that's key. He still had access. You still have her. access. You can always turn it around. Yep. Exactly. What you always say, what you taught me, right? So here's the thing. I'm like, okay. No more hanging out with her on the couch, no matter what. If you propose a date and she says, I don't feel like going out, just come over and watch TV. That's when you have to say, oh, too bad. I'm still going to go do the activity I suggested. Hope you decide. Right. And spend the day without her then. Go do the thing. Anything's better than being Mr. Tame boring next to her on the couch. All right. So I said, we got to get her out of her home territory and get her onto your turf, right? Because at her apartment, you're sitting on her couch, watching the TV show that she picks, drinking the wine or food that she decides to serve, and everybody goes to bed when she decides it's time. That's putting her in what? The masculine role, again, right? So let's get her out of there. So I said, let's get off of her turf and get into your turf. So Lyle, what are you all about? Music. So this guy, Lyle, He's very cool. He actually owns a recording studio in Seattle and he often like scouts talent and brings in unknown bands to give them their big break. Right. So he, I was like, let's turn that into a date so that she feels the vibe of you on your home turf instead of always sitting on her couch. Have you ever helped a guy do something like that, Bobby? Yeah. I always, it's like, you want to display excellence. You want to be a home turf advantage. It's huge, but it's also like letting her see you again, going back to this idea of masculinity, when yeah. you're doing something where you're in charge, where you're the leader, where she gets to see you in your realm, it's always going to be attractive to women. Always. 100%. Absolutely. So I was like, dude, let's go for broke. Let's let her see. You're not a loser. You've just been acting like a loser yeah. because you're afraid of criticism. Stop it and show her the real you, the guy she got attracted to in the beginning. Let me remind you, Tony. Fuck. Using your wrong your name again. Anyways. So anyways, so what, here. so here's the text. So. Here's the text that I wrote him. Saturday, I'm going to head to Sunset Tavern to hear a new band play. Come help me decide if these kids have any talent worth scouting. Maybe they'll have muffins and it'll be your lucky night. Yeah, perfect. What do you notice about that text, Bobby, that makes it good? A few things. There's so many things, right? One is that he's going to be doing it anyway. He's inviting her along, very masculine, because he's heading there, right? Second off... He's bringing her, and this is something that I noticed as we were going through all these texts, right? Mm-hmm. Is that it's a you and I vibe. It's a, it's the us vibe. Everything that you've been giving him is always the us vibe. Cause it's like you reacting to her, her reacting to you, the bed about the muffin, the machine gun Kelly. It's always a us, right? Most yeah. guys ask a question, how's your day going? And she's like, oh, I had this and this happen. Oh, I had all this and this happen. And that's a her vibe and a you vibe you always want to get the us vibe. And what this did is not only did you present the idea, which in a masculine way, but then it's like, come and help me. We'll check out these kids. We'll see if they have any talent. So you've created more of that, but you've also subconsciously presented yourself as an authority, which is also masculine. We're going to, I'm the scout. I'm going to decide if these kids have talents. 
And then you brought an old joke into it with the muffins, right? You brought back some previous callback humor, so to speak, which kind of ties it back. Very yeah. good. Very good all around. Yep. Yeah. So this time he didn't argue. He was on board. He sent it. She agreed right away. Not only did she not flake, but they ended up having sex on that date for the first time in a month. Wow. Yeah. And that's because you know what happens and, that, and, and is that, and this happens a lot with guys when they get comfortable is, and it happens a lot, a lot of guys never get the chance to get comfortable because they start out this way. But some guys, they don't realize that it's, you always need to be recreating this flirtatious vibe. Yeah. It's not okay. She agreed to go out on a date with me. A lot of guys can't get over it, especially guys who really base their self-worth on looks. It's oh, yeah. almost like they think if a girl agrees to go out with them, it's, oh, she finds me attractive. I'm okay now. I don't have to do anything. When we both know looks play a very, looks get you in the door sometimes. Looks get you a little bit more attention. But at the yeah. end of the day, if you try to rely on your looks, you're going to lose very fast because yeah. girls, it's, it's boring for a girl if you're not continually bringing her back in. And this is why most guys, this is why 90% of the guys that call us for coaching is because they lost a girl's interest because they did not know how to keep engaging her. Sometimes it's they just gave their hand away too soon. Other times it's that they just couldn't keep that masculine vibe with her, that flirty vibe. And they kept falling into maybe they did it for a day. And then the next day they're real. They forgot, oh, what do I do? And they just revert back to interview mode, boring conversations. Great case study. Normally at the end of these things, I especially when I'm talking to someone like you who does coaching, I always say, explain what you do for a client. But what was great about this is you just showed us exactly what you do for a client, right? This is when you work with a guy, this is essentially what you do. This is a perfect example. A lot of guys say, so even when they find out I'm a dating coach, so what do you do for these guys? What do you just pump them up with confidence? And I'm like, no, we actually dig in to their situation and we help them. We help them with specifics. And more importantly, we help as you did here and, and you, you did a friggin' great, amazing job of this is oh, you. you got him back in the game, but you didn't just give him, you didn't go on some book and say, Hey, you, you did stuff that is congruent to who he is. And that's the big thing with coaching. It's, it's not just, Hey, do this and this. It's let me dig into your life. Let me see who you are and let me help you present the most attractive version of you that I can to this woman. So I thought that was really good. Tell us, just give us, because I know some guys are going to, what else can I get from working with you? And guys, listen, I'm putting a link below this to Calvin's page. I highly recommend it. Like I said, Calvin has been coaching with me for over a year. I've known you for five years now. You, back in the day, you did coaching with me. You did coaching with Rob Judge. Oh, yeah, like a student. Bobby Rio. Yeah, we've, I've been in the game. I've been on yeah. Team Rio a long time. Yeah. yeah, we've known each other now. We've known each other now for a while, both as me helping you coach, eventually you helping me with the clients in the forums. And then for the past, it's probably over a year now, you coming on as a coach. And I was shocked how fast you picked it up and how the guys, they've been coming back. They've been asking for you. They've been requesting working with you. So what else? Give me, we're getting late on time, but for the guys curious, okay, I don't need help with texting. I'm all right with texting. What other areas can you help guys with? Okay, that's a great question. Definitely, I help a lot of guys with in-person flirting, and we can customize that. I know what a lot of guys want to do is flirt with that hot coworker that they really like. So I help a lot of guys customize a strategy around the workplace, right? Or if it's a girl in your social circle, how to show up and be flirtatious with her. I can help guys also plan dates. Like if you've already got the girl ready to see you and you're pretty good with texting, I will tell you, you know, minute for minute for minute, here's a blueprint for a great date from when you pick her up to the moment she goes home. And we'll work on everything from what to say, tone of voice, body language, how to touch, how to go for the kiss. That's a big, a big thing a lot of guys wanna work for is how to actually go for the kiss and get the kiss. So we definitely work a lot on that. Yeah. I help guys with all sorts of situations. In fact, I love a challenge. I really love a challenge. So I'm waiting for the guy to hit me up with a brand new situation that's not even something I just said. You tell me what you're into, give me the facts, and I'm going to help you get through it. Looking good, feeling good, getting the woman that you want. Yeah. So this has been awesome. And we're definitely going to have to do a lot more of these because I really think you over delivered in terms of 
the way that you walked these guys who are watching through an actual case study and you and can even see right how you can just make little changes and that's what's really great about a coach too is a lot of times when you're too close to the situation and it's just been how you are for so long you don't realize these things and you also don't realize how much you have going for you that you're not portraying attractively where a coach and i've worked with guys too where i'm like why are you not using that you i'm yeah. like you have to have this and this and you're like not even oh i didn't know all right i thought she would i'm like no when you have things and they just don't know sometimes and that's one of the beauties of bringing in an outside set of eyes to your situation so again i'm going to leave a link below for calvin's page where you can learn about the different packages he offers i highly if you're struggling in any area of your dating life i fully endorse you checking him out using him i've gotten nothing but positive results if you like this video hit subscribe leave us a comment too let us know what you know i've got calvin calvin on here i'm gonna bring him on again soon leave topics below that you would like to see me and calvin cover we can do other case studies just like this if you yeah. enjoyed it so Calvin, thanks for joining me. Yeah, it's been a real pleasure. All right, we will see you guys soon. All right, awesome, man. Yeah, that was...